the What True Next podcast helps you build a TBR of future favorite books. In each episode, Lori and Maine interviews authors and book influencers to recommend books they loved for you to pick up today. If you're an avid reader, always looking for your next free read, then the show is Hi, friends. Welcome to What True Next podcast. Hi, Laura. Thanks so much for having me on. Thrilled to be here. So happy to have you on. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Gosh, uh, well, I'm Grant, um, probably most formally known uh, as the founder and CEO of Pango Books, uh, which is a marketplace for books and, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, really fitting with this with this podcast for sure. But I actually, uh, you know, I was born in Texas, grew up in the South, uh, spent some time in the military, spent four years in the Navy overseas on an aircraft carrier, a lot of stories there. Uh, that's it's a crazy living environment if anybody out there has been in the Navy they'll understand that Uh, and then got out got a degree from Texas A&M started Pango uh, and now I've got actually four kids under six years old so I'm also incredibly busy not just in business but also in my personal life Uh, but yeah that's a little bit a little bit about me so did you go to the college campus college station campus and at the main campus Yes, yes, I, I was there. there. <laughs> okay, yes, I, I spent five, I five whole years. It, uh, it took me five years to get yeah. uh, a degree in engineering. Uh, but yeah, okay. I love it. I miss it. Yeah, I spent a summer um, orientation, I'm working in orientation, which is like a big, it's a big process of indoctrinating yeah. you into the culture of being an Aggie and all the songs <laughs> and the stuff and the specifics. So I, it was about 20 years wow. ago. So it was wow. a fun summer. I was liberal coming from New York and I was like, oh, I'm not in <laughs> Kansas anymore. <laughs> yes. The traditions at A&M, there's so many, a lot of them are really weird, Yeah, uh, but it's, it's definitely hardcore. And if there's any Aggies out there, you know, yeah. gig them. <laughs> it is hardcore but yeah it, it is definitely was fun it was a fun summer you know hot but it was fun <laughs> yeah well and the, the heat is why I don't live there anymore I moved to Nashville yeah uh just to be a little far I didn't want to be as far south it's so hot I mean only in middle Texas mm-hmm. is there less people outside in the middle of summer than there is the middle of winter just because the heat yeah. is so bad yeah uh, it's wild it's wild. So, okay. So let's chat about Pango Books. First of all, what is Pango Books and what can our readers expect from visiting Pango Books? Yeah. Yeah. So Pango Books is a marketplace for books. So think uh, if you're looking to get like amazing deals on books, it's the place to buy them. A hundred percent of the inventory is used. Uh, people list new books, uh, but we don't actually sell anything except for if we're selling individuals. So 100% of the books are made up by people like you, people like me, uh, just grabbing books off their bookshelves, taking a picture, listing them. Uh, that's 100% of the inventory. And the average person has over 100 books, physical books on their bookshelf. Mm-hmm. And you know somebody like you is going to have a lot more. Uh, but there's a lot of books out there that sit on shelves forever. And so... I really came up with this idea as a way to get those books flowing uh, to other readers. Uh, there's a you know a huge passion around books, and like my my love for books started with the ability that a book has to influence you. So I think you know the right book can change your life, mm-hmm. uh, fiction or nonfiction. It can open up your mind to creativity. It's so different than uh, you know film, you know digital content. Uh, a book can take you on a journey and change your life. And so I thought, wow, like that is a, that is such a powerful thing. I wanted to build a business around that and, you know, had a lot of ideas for like building a better Goodreads, uh, but I really just settled on this marketplace idea because nobody was doing a really good job of helping your everyday reader just exchange books with each other. So that's what Pango Books is. It's a place to buy and sell your books. Uh, If you have a ton of books like you do, you can list them real easy we take care of the the entire shipping process so like when i sell sell a book i I don't even leave my house i just drop it off in my you know put it in a mailer mailer and drop it off in my mailbox box with the flag up and usps picks it up we manage the whole shipping flow the Mm -hmm. we take all the pain out of it so that selling something like a six dollar book is like easy enough to make it worth it Uh, that's really the goal 
And then obviously, you know, being able to turn around and buy another book from somebody else. And you can also like the big, the thing that gets me most excited about Pango and about what we're building is the connection with other people. Like I hear about it all the time, people actually making friends uh, and a, like a good way to know about somebody is just look at somebody's bookshelf on Pango. You see what they're listing, what they probably like reading, uh, and you can connect with somebody uh, through that and then also grab a book off their bookshelf. So yeah, that's a, a long explanation of what Pango is. <laughs> It is. And I will tell you, as a person who has sold books and I bought books, it's as a person who's trying to sell some books off load of books. So you're like, okay, I read it once. I don't want to read this again. It's super easy to do is just take a picture, take a picture of the barcode. It'll pop up the information. You set the price. And then when the sale is made, you just get a link to print out the, the shipping and that's it. You don't need to figure out the cost no. of shipping. You don't need to figure out the specifics. It's just easy to do you know yeah so it's a seamless process and it's like it yeah. makes it easier because what was happening before pango was we, there were facebook groups and you're like putting like stacks of books and you're like yeah. pick these <laughs> and then you just have to get a you had to get a, a kitchen yeah. scale weigh the books try to find <laughs> paypal to see if you can do that media mail you know yeah. and then or go to the post office and go because i was i normally would have gone to the post office with like five ten packages that i had to calculate you know there and it's like hours yeah. it saves hours of time you know yeah yeah that's true you made me laugh with the like the facebook group thing because that's still like if you go on the facebook marketplace it's stacks and stacks and stacks of books and that was something that was hard for us because like everybody's tendency was to list like 100 percent of their books in one listing mm -hmm. and so we tried really hard to break it up into single books so that the buyer can pick and choose off of your bookshelf and kind of create their own stack and own bundle yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's funny. I see all those listings with like 50 books and, uh, you know, they weigh like 50 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> shipping that is not easy. Yeah, yeah. shipping is not easy. So <laughs> um, so let's chat about like in terms of community aspect, like as you'd mentioned a little bit about like creating a product, you know, and finding this marketplace as product, but thinking about Goodreads and all the other areas so as a breeder, you know, how do you see pango becoming kind of like a go-to place for our readers to you know connect with another but also discover new reads and discover new ways you know yeah yeah your question actually defines our pursuit really mm -hmm. and i'd say like that a lot of those things you just said are our focus for the next year uh and it really speaks to my passion because that's really what i want to see like i want to build a community uh where bookish people are making friends and actually sharing ideas and uh for books book recommendations leaving book reviews all of that uh we've spent most of the time building like a good e-commerce foundation and so that's what you see now we do have some social things on there like we have threads where you can actually uh post it start a discussion uh it's a little complicated to combine a marketplace with a social environment i've found mm -hmm. just because it's like two different uh, motives you're mm -hmm. you know am i there to make friends and get a book recommendation or am i there to like sell and get a good deal so they can kind of be at odds and i think finding the finding how they mesh together really well is mm -hmm. is really the challenge um but i think you know it starts with like just a a good place where people feel like Pango is an extension of themselves. Mm -hmm. And so I know like, you know, with the book talk community, the bookstagram can all the, all the bookish uh, people on uh, Instagram, creating an environment where it feels like home. And that's mm -hmm. what we've done with like making your own bookshelf where you feel like you kind of have ownership over your own bookshelf, your own expression of yourself on the app. Mm -hmm. I think we've done a good job of, about the, uh, on that. Uh, but something we want to do a lot better at is really just getting our uh, pangoers to leave reviews and recommend books to others. So just, mm -hmm. you, you know, using the, you know, over a quarter million people that use Pango books and using like them as uh, a wonderful resource to share book recommendations with others. Uh, some of that is going to be, you know, stuff you see on Instagram where you actually have like videos and people can leave video recommendations. That's something we're really excited about. Uh, live sales where you can actually, you know, have a video and 
um, sell stuff live without yeah. having, you know, uh, there's a lot, a lot of apps that do that. Uh, we're looking at doing that. Uh, and then also just, you know, finding a way to get people talking more, mm -hmm. um, you know, beyond like just messaging and leaving threads, but actually connecting people based on their interests. And that's a hard thing too, because with books, books are so widely categorized mm -hmm. and it's not even the same. Like there's so many different ways so many different buckets a single book can fit into, mm -hmm. you know, so categorizing them can be hard. We've really tried to use tags for that. Um, but yeah, our goals really in the, in the, in the coming year are to allow the voice of our users to be louder mm -hmm. rather than, you know, behind the scenes algorithms or things like that. But we do want to become the place where you can go on to not only find a good deal, but find a new book that you're interested in. Mm -hmm. And we're doing some stuff. There's some stuff in the works with machine learning and other things that are over my head. Um, but essentially that's the goal that when you open the app, you can find something that you've never heard of before. And that you also have a like high probability of being interested. And that's kind of our Holy grail and what we've been, what we've been, you know, brainstorming on lately. That sounds really exciting. That sounds really good. And I want to preface this and to readers who may want to have a store, but they may not be available at all times. You can put the store on pause. There is also that feature. Um, yeah. So if that's a barrier of entry that you're like, I'm not going to be able to maintain it a whole year around. Like there's, yeah. there's, there's features that allow you to put it on pause and to just restart yeah. it and just same time for use and like buy some books, you know, too. Yeah, and one one thing that people don't know as well, it's like kind of not a hidden feature, uh, but not as obvious, is like shopping from a single seller. You mm -hmm. can get a like way better deals that way because you get one shipping cost, you know, since it's shipping from one location. So that's something that I always encourage people to do is find find a person on Pingo that they're interested in that sells a lot of books and kind of make that their go-to place. We have uh, the follow feature for that where you can follow somebody. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, yes, you can definitely put your shop on hold. That's, it's funny what, what is, what are the barriers to entry for people? And it's that, it's like, you know, I'm traveling, I'm not available, but yeah, you can put your shop on hold. Yeah. And yeah, I'll, at the end of the episode, I'll share a couple of stores that are, have plenty of inventory and my store will probably have plenty of inventory as I was sharing Grant some of the pictures <laughs> of books that I have to upload. Um, so what do you hope, like, you know, you mentioned what you hope in the next year to do for Pango Books, but what do you see Pango Books in the future? Like five, 10 mm. years, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, gosh. Sometimes it's so hard to look that far mm -hmm. into the future. It's like I get so consumed with the now. Um, but yes, there's there's a huge vision for the future. And number one is, you know, we want to bring Pango books to our Canadian readers. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the most requested, probably the most requested uh, thing is to bring Pango books to Canada. We have so many Canadian fans, awesome people there. And so we'd like to go international right now. Like we're just in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, we'd love to go to the UK. We'd love to go to Canada. We'd love to go to a lot of different places. Uh, it's challenging though, because shipping costs explode when you talk about international shipping. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we want to do is create uh, its own ecosystem in every country that we go to. Uh, so when we go to Canada, it's kind of got to stand on its own legs and have shipping uh, within Canada, not necessarily from the U.S. to Canada, unless it's a rare special edition, you know, high cost book that's worth uh, the shipping. So, you know, going international and and really connecting the world through books, because that's kind of our mission. That is our mission statement is connecting the world through books. Uh, and right now we're just doing it in the United States. So that would be one. Uh, number two, something we've played around with. And uh, I don't know if I should be saying it on here. This is really a you know, a, a back in the kitchen discussion, but uh, something we've been really playing around with is is how independent bookstores can fit into mm -hmm. uh, the Pango Books ecosystem. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's, you know, there's a huge movement to save independent bookstores. A lot of independent bookstores struggle with how easy it is to buy like from Amazon. Uh, and so mm -hmm. allowing 
bringing on independent bookstores and local delivery. So instead of, so here, here's a, here's like a, a world where in five years, Panga will be. Instead of, you know, buying something on Amazon and getting next day or two day shipping, being able to buy a new book from a local bookstore around you and get same hour delivery with uh, DoorDash uh, or, you know, a, you know, one of the like yeah. same hour delivery, like Uber Eats. Yeah. There's a ton of them. Yeah. Um, I think that's, that's probably the most exciting thing to me to think about actually beating Amazon on delivery speed, also helping independent bookstores. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when you're, when you're wanting to pick up a new book, you're, uh, you know, getting it local and feeling good about it. So local delivery is something uh, that's really exciting as well. And then the last thing uh, that I think we could see in the next five to 10, 10 years is a way for independent authors. It doesn't have to be independent authors. Those are the ones that like pull at my heartstrings because there's mm -hmm. a, a huge movement in that direction. You know, a lot of people have amazing content that they're writing and don't get a publishing deal or maybe they feel like their publishing deal is not favorable to them and they want to, you know, be independent. And so allowing, opening up the Pango Books community uh, to independent sellers and allowing them to really like make a name and build a brand selling directly to their readers through Pango mm -hmm. Books. So an example would be uh, you write a book, uh, you want to launch it on Pango. We advertise it for you. You do uh, a virtual book signing event where you, you know, have this like a little, uh, a video call with all your, you know, your fans and sign their book right in front of them and then drop it in the mail and send it to them. So we want to do a lot of things like that. Uh, obviously that would bring us into like the new book category too, which is of course mm -hmm. where we want to go. Uh, but right now, you know, that's a, a long way off from just the peer to peer environment that we are now. And that's really our bones. And I think always will be uh, the core of what we do. But yeah, I think some of those verticals and horizontals that we just talked about are, are things that really excite me uh, that are definitely coming. <laughs> These are very exciting things. I think Canada is going to be a big one. You know, that's a, yeah. a big market and it's exciting to beat Amazon in their own game, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's like, you're beating Amazon. Faster than Amazon. Yeah. You know, we like, could do that. But you're even giving them like you're giving like you're helping other people like you know you're helping other people like you're you're flowing the, the information like you're not like books are not going to waste they're being they're yeah. they're moving around after the big red so they're having a life on its own after you know just somebody else who's going to discover and who knows they may just go yes. back to the angle and do the same thing and over and over so it's not like I want undone. Uh, a statistic I heard recently, and I don't know if it's in the U.S. or in the world, mm -hmm. let's just say U.S. and maybe maybe it's the whole world, uh, over 300 million pounds of books are thrown into the dump every year. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's something, you know, I like to tell people because whenever you reuse and you know, re-commerce, resale, uh, like you're helping helping a book have another life. You're literally saving books <laughs> from uh, from the dumpster. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's exciting. If you're a book lover, you know why that's exciting. If you're not a book lover, maybe not, but uh, yeah, that's an interesting fact. That's a really interesting fact. And so, you know, you have a place, you have a resource that's easy to use. That's, it's a simple, it's not a headache. You can actually do it with your phone. You can take pictures, no professional camera needed, you know, just scan it, sell it and just move, move along and have the book have a life of its own to somebody else. So yeah um so what kind of let's start off with some book recommendations so what kind of genre do you tend to gravitate when it comes to reading so i absolutely love biographies mm -hmm. um so i mainly read biographies and self-improvement entrepreneurial books i've had a heavy lean towards entrepreneurial books just because that's kind of what i've needed for the past two years mm -hmm. um, but love biographies i love reading stories about people uh, who've done things that I'm interested in doing and just learning from experience rather than from coaching. So I think that's the difference between like what I get out of a biography versus, you know, like a self-improvement book, a self-improvement book is like, you know, nine steps to be your best self or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but a biography is, is you just reading about somebody, uh, overcoming challenges. And that is what I get the most out of. I love reading stories about other people. And that's why um, biographies are the most exciting to me but yeah that's a little bit about what I read um, yeah 
And do you have any books to recommend our listeners to pick up? Definitely. So I, I'll talk about, well, I guess currently reading is probably next, but I, I'm, I'm excited to talk about that book. Um, it's probably my favorite biography right now, not of all time, you won't do all time, but favorite recent biography that I've read is Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. It's hugely popular. Probably most people have heard of it. It's a gruesome story, though, like in the first one or two chapters when you read about his childhood. And for anybody that doesn't know, David Goggins uh, is a Navy SEAL, ultra marathon runner. He's just overcome a lot in his life, but he had a childhood of just hardship and abuse. Uh, and then he ended up uh, becoming a Navy SEAL and just overcoming so many challenges in his own life. And it's just so inspirational uh, to read about because, you know, some of the the, you know, some of the things that I pull out of that, uh, like life is not easy. Life uh, mm -hmm. is a lot of fun, can be a lot of fun, but it's, you know, a lot of it is really, really hard. And a lot of times, you know, people are struggling through things. Often they're struggling through things silently because uh, they don't want to talk about it. They want to look like they're okay to everybody. Uh, and, you know, this book is just a real encouragement. Like if you are struggling through something, uh, if you are overcoming a challenge, like you can see other people, you can see someone else do it, not in a way that's showy, if that makes sense. So a little backstory on me, like I, I actually, I, when I was in the Navy, you know, I went through BUDS, I didn't make it through the BUDS training. And that was a failure that kind of haunted me for a long time. And then, mm -hmm. you know, and I read this book, I found like before he became a SEAL, he went through uh, this really intense Air Force training and didn't make it through that. Uh, but he didn't let that define him. He overcame it uh, and ended up conquering an even bigger mountain. Uh, so it's just a, it's a real encouraging book. Um, another one, you know, oh, we'll stick with that vein and then switch over to kind of a different genre. Um, there's a book called Grit by Angela Duckworth. Mm -hmm. Definitely recommend that book. Uh, she's an amazing author and has really just studied uh, what makes someone persevere because the way that she, and I'm like loosely defining, cause it's been a bit since I read it, but loosely defining her definition of grit, which is, uh, the ability to persevere through with one thing for a very long time, right? Like it'd be like, you know, in your example, the ability to run this podcast for as long as you've done it, like that's grit, right? A lot of people can do two episodes, <laughs> 10 episodes, uh, and then they're like, ah, you know, I'm not going to do it anymore. I can't do it anymore. Having the grit and perseverance to to keep going uh, and build something out of it is really, really hard to do. And I think anything worth doing requires that grit. Uh, and so if anything worth doing requires grit, this book definitely teaches like how it's developed and how you can get it and how sometimes grit is just like surviving another day and uh, just continuing going. Uh, so it's another really encouraging book, uh, but it's really just the psychology of grit. So it's kind of, it's actually a psychology book is what it is, but it will teach you a lot about yourself and your own mind. Uh, and then my last recommendation is actually a book that I'm like almost done with. So I'm going to go ahead and recommend it, even though I'm not completely finished, uh, but it's a brand new book. Uh, it's called The Myth of Normal uh, by Gabor is his first name. I can't, I can't pronounce his last name, so I'm not going to try. It's either mate or Matt. Yeah, I, I tried, but I shouldn't have. Uh, <laughs> it's it's called the myth of normal, and it's probably one of the most original. I don't even know how to say this, but it's just when you read it, it's one of the most original things I've read in a long time. Where it got me really thinking about, uh, and to give a little synopsis, he talks about uh, small t trauma versus big t trauma. Small t trauma being you know, you were bullied as a kid, nothing really terrible happened to you, but you were bullied or something like that. And how that affects, how that can affect you later in life, how, you know, we suppress our personalities. He links a lot of this stuff even uh, to like later in life disease, uh, the mind body connection. So it's a beautiful book about the mind body connection. If you're interested in, um, you know, kind of, it, it'll definitely get you thinking about why you are a certain way. Um, my, it's amazing. Uh, you know, I think one of the biggest ones for me is just like linking some things that happened in my childhood to my per current personality. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, super eye opening. And, you know, with me, I'm like, 
I just want to know, you know, like, I want to know how I think, why I think that way. And then I can dissect it and then I can change it. Cause if you just say, oh, this is just how I am. It's like a defeating way to look at things. I like to really unpack, you know, how we think uh, and, and learn more from it. So that's an amazing book. I definitely recommend uh, yeah, that as well. I'm adding that book to my CBR for sure, because I'm like one of those people who's like, I need to change the thought process, you know, and I spend enough time in therapy, journaling and doing the different things to change the way I think of doing things like it's a whole because a lot of it's a mindset game. It's yeah. like you have to change, like you have to have the right mindset to accomplish whatever you set yourself for. Yeah, it's not it's not like a, it's not like you just like actively doing it. It's like sometimes you just do auto autopilot, but sometimes your thoughts yes. like autopilot. So how to change your yes. autopilot thought to basically yes. do the thing. And that's so know. hard. Like we, th there's a science behind that too. Like it's called myelin that wraps these different neural connections in your brain. Yeah. And that's a habit yeah. and breaking that's so hard because it's literally <laughs> things you do without thinking. So a lot of yeah. us do self-destructive things without thinking. Uh, and changing that, that, but the mindset, that's like my last recommendation of what I'm currently reading, uh, which is, and I'm halfway through this, but I'd already recommend it, is Mindset by Carol Dweck, uh, an older book, but it just literally talks about the difference between a fixed mindset and having a, having a fixed mindset and having a growth mindset. Mm -hmm. um, and I think like I certainly had a fixed mindset uh, most of my life mm -hmm. and you don't even realize you have it and how it's crippling you. And it's essentially a fixed mindset believes that your current level of intelligence is all you'll ever have. Uh, who you currently are is all you currently uh, will ever be. Uh, you know, like, for example, like saying that you suck at math or something like that, even though like I used to say that about myself and then I ended up getting an engineering degree. I, you know, I was terrible at math most, most of my life. And I just thought that that was the definition of who I was. I'm just not good at math. Um, but the growth mindset believes that they can always learn something new, that they can change their level of intelligence. And honestly, like whether it's true or not, uh, physiologically, just like the hope and belief that you can do something is often the impetus you need to actually do it. And mm -hmm. so it's it's another encouraging book. Like I, I realize there's a theme through all the books I've recommended here, mm -hmm. um, you know, but like when you're striving for goals and looking to uh, make things happen in your life like it's so important that you have the right mindset so I definitely that's what I'm currently reading and I recommend it already <laughs> I love this I love these recommendations I love they're in alignment with like you're doing something major and so like something that's revolutionary to the book world at the same time like if you have to have the right mindset the right you know the right emphasis the right thought process to create this process of change you know so it all comes yeah. together <laughs> So. Yeah. Well, I got to say too about that, like the one thing everybody says uh, about Pango is, oh, it's like Amazon and having Amazon be like, you know, your number one competitor is really <laughs> discouraging <laughs> a lot of the time. Uh, so a lot of it comes from that, just, uh, you know, feeling like breaking into the book industry with a new product mm -hmm. is really, really hard. Um, but honestly, thanks to all the people that love reading, it's been possible. And I think that's something a lot of people didn't realize is, you know, readers are more interested in other readers, the whole experience, rather than just, you know, getting a book and, you know, reading it. So I think hopefully we're building, you know, a home for people that love books as much as we do. <laughs> I think you are. So, um, so tell us where you can get Panga books. Like, is it an app? Like, yeah. How do, we, how do we get it? We've been talking about it, but now yeah. we're ready to be like, okay, let's download it and let's get yeah. this started. <laughs> so I recommend everybody to use the app. We do have a website, uh, but it's, it's not an afterthought, but it's, it's the app is the main focus of like our mm -hmm. development team. Uh, we put the most work into it. Uh, it's actually the only way you can sell. So you can you can buy on the website, but to sell, you need the app. So you can get the app by searching uh, for Pango Books on uh, iOS or Android app stores, and you should see it right away. Um, and yeah, you can download it. You can set up your own shop in literally 30 seconds. You could download it and have a book for sale in as little as 30 seconds. Like time yourself and tell me if I'm wrong because <laughs> it, it's really that easy. So at least check it out. Um, and if you're not interested in selling, you know, 
definitely see, you know, today is Black Friday. We have a ton of sellers uh, offering amazing discounts. You'll see that on the homepage. So you'll see some offering like as much as 10 plus dollars off uh, bundle orders. So you can get books for an even better deal than otherwise on Pango today. So uh, this this is going to air after Black Friday, but but uh, you need, you need yeah. to be on the lookout for deals because like a lot of sellers are reluctant to like they need to make some room for space, so they might put off load it. So again, try to find those sellers who have a hundred plus books, you know, and buy from that one seller. Like go go wild on their bookshelf, you know. Yeah, and it'll make their day. It'll make yeah. uh, somebody's day too. It's also a good way to feel good about your purchase. Amazon will not notice uh, when <laughs> yeah. you buy something from them, no, they, but they, everything you buy on Pango, somebody's <laughs> gonna notice, and you're gonna make somebody's day. Yeah. So thank you, Grant, for being on the show. This has been awesome. It's been great to meet you. Great. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, rate, and review the show. This is the easiest way to support the podcast. For a list of books mentioned and other romance recommendations, please visit whatreadnextblog.com. Did you know you can purchase audiobooks directly from your favorite local bookstore? With Libro.fm, you can pick up more than 250,000 audiobooks, including bestsellers and recommendations from real booksellers. You'll get the same audiobooks at the same price as the largest audiobook company, you know the name. But you'll be part of a different story, one that supports your local community. If you're new to audiobooks, there's a perfect way to squeeze into more reading to your busy life. Listen with the free Libro.fm app while you do your chores, walk your dog, relax at home. The Watch Read Next podcast has a special offer for our listeners. Get two audiobooks on Libro.fm for the price of one with your first month of membership. Use code Watch to Read Next. This offer is only valid for new members in Canada and the U.S. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.